of your house, but you have no idea where to begin, what the process looks like, or what to do, this video is for you, where I will go over the process of selling your house, what you should do before you list it, and then at the end, I will do what I include in my package for listing your house. And don't forget to wait for the end till you can hear what mistake everyone, most everyone is doing in today's market. Hey everyone, what's up? It's Brittany Trujillo here with Be True Realty in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And if you are thinking of moving or maybe you're gonna relocate to this area, reach out to me and I would love to help you. I wanna be your go-to number one realtor for all your questions, wants, or needs. Reach out, all of my information is down below. Call, text, email, find me on Facebook, whatever is easiest for you. All right, let's get it going on the process of listing, selling your house. So first, I suggest finding a realtor you can trust and who's gonna put you and your needs first. So you may not know an agent, so I suggest reaching out to a few different agents and kind of interviewing them, get the feel of them, figure out who you can trust, who you're vibing with, and just who's gonna be the best fit for you. We all run our business differently. No realtor is the same. So make sure you kind of figure out what they offer and what they can do for you. And just make the best choice for you. Second little thing I tell my clients, it doesn't, it's not a must or a need, but I always suggest finding out how much they owe on their mortgage still. So that way when we sit down and talk about price, we can see how big of a check they can get at the end of the day. <laughs> and when it's all said and done, so we just take, we figure out like if we sold your house for this much, here's all your fees, here's still what you owe, and this is what is remaining. This is what you will end up with when it's all said and done. So it's really cool to see um, that portion of it. Um, after you pick an agent, they should and sit down and discuss their listing presentation, everything that they can do for you, which I will save mine until the end so I don't bore everyone to death if you're not here to use them. So getting your house ready to be sold. First is fix all the holes that are from like the pictures and decorations, that kind of stuff. Just make it look nice and neat. Yes, you could probably put your house on the market like how it is right now and it would be sold, but you want it to make it look nice. You can get, if you make it look nice and clean and follow these tips, you'll get top dollars for your house. Number two, clean up, of course. You wanna make it look like almost like no one is living in your house, even though you are. But you don't want like the pens and ice cream sitting out, that kind of stuff. Pick up after yourself. Make it look like no one's living there. Um, light bulbs, this is more just like my, my pet peeve, I guess more or less <laughs> to say. I like it when all of the light bulbs in the house match and are like the white LED daylight light bulbs, um, not like the orange tinty ones. I understand that some special light features are certain light bulbs and you can't really help that. But if you have like a multiple light bulbs in one light picture, make sure all those match because that, oh, that, that irks me when it's like one orange and one white in the same picture. Yeah, make them look nice. Um, declutter, 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 declutter your house. If you have kids, like I got four of them, shove a bunch of toys in a tote and throw it in the garage. Most people don't really care what the garage looks like. So just get a lot of stuff, put it into the garage. Closets and like your cabinets and cupboards. I suggest cleaning out like half of the stuff in there. Take out half of the stuff and put it away. You won't need it. But doing that kind of tricks the buyer's mind into thinking that there's more room in that closet than there is. If there's a bunch of stuff in that closet and they're like, it's falling on them, they're gonna think in their mind that this closet is small and there's, there's not enough room for my stuff. <clears throat> so take out most of that stuff. Trick that brain into thinking that this is a huge closet because there's not that much stuff in there. Same with your cabinets. You're like, not just like your linen closets, but also like your clothes closets. Take out like half the hangers and stuff. Just make it look like there's a lot of stuff. You want to depersonalize your house. 
I know you like to look at your baby or your puppy, your family pictures on your wall. I get it. But the buyers don't really want to see that. They want to picture themselves living in that house. They don't want to picture you living there. So take out those pictures. If you're taking out those nails, cover those holes and paint over it so it makes it look nice. Nice and neat. Um, but yeah, depersonalize. It's only temporary. You can move into the next house and hang everything back up. The last one is make sure your house, house it smells good. You don't want an overpowering smell and it just hits you when you open the door. But you know, like cookies or baked bread, that kind of thing before showings or open houses, that does you really good. If your house has that overwhelming smell, buyers are gonna think that you are trying to cover up something or trying to hide something, but so you don't want that. You just want a nice smell to welcome them, I guess you would say. And then depends, your agent may help stage your house. You know, they may want, might want to move furniture to make it look bigger and open. It's kind of up to the agent. So that's how you get your house ready to be sold on the market to get the highest amount of money that you can. <clears throat> okay, so after um, you get your house all ready, pictures, all that good stuff is done, you put it, actually before you put it on the MLS, I sit down with my clients and talk about the price. I show them all the houses that were sold recently, all of them that are currently active on the market that we're trying to compete with, and all the ones that were that are under contract. And then we get all of those houses, compare their house to those, and get a price point. Then we go on to the market and put on the MLS. Once it gets on the MLS, marketing material, all of my ads, all that good stuff is going out to everyone that needs to see it. I will schedule the open houses. I haven't told you this, but I do all my own open houses. I don't let some other agent come in and do it for me. I know your house. I know you. I know what you want and are looking for. So I feel like I am the best one to help represent the house. So it'll be me doing open houses. Unless there's some emergency or something and I can't, but I will be that one to show the house. Showings are done, open house, we got an offer under contract. The buyer may get an inspection. So we will go through the inspection period. We can negotiate if they're asking for you to help fix stuff or whatnot, but they go into negotiations. After inspection, um, the um, lender will do schedule the appraiser, they will come out and take pictures and determine the value of the house and then the title work for you and the buyers to see if there's no judgments or liens or anything like that so that you are all clear and ready to sell your house. And of course, sell, selling day, <laughs> closing day, sign the papers, done, get your paycheck, hand the keys over, you are free to go. So there you go, that is kind of the process, getting your house ready, getting it from listing to close. Now, I am going to talk about a little bit of my listing presentation and what I all have to offer. These are things that I think help put me apart from the others and why I think I am the perfect fit to sell a house. So one of the main things I, I push and I strive for is limited clients. I do not like to take on a lot of clients because I want to be available for you. I never want my client to feel like I am too busy that I can't help them. Because I am a solo agent, it's just me, only me on this team, this team. It's only me, I'm the only one that you'll be working with. Sorry. Um, <laughs> But it's just me, so I don't want you to feel like I don't have that time for you. Number two is my open communication. I am open, I'm honest, I'm usually available to call or text. If for some reason I can't answer your phone or text right away, I try to set like a maximum of an hour response time. It may just be a response of, hey, in a meeting, I'll get back to you soon. But at least you know I saw your message or text or something and you know I will be getting to you when I can. <clears throat> oh, also about phone. I My phone is on from like 7 a.m. till 10 p.m. Monday through Sunday. 
If by chance you're laying in bed at night, can't sleep, and you thought of a question, it's 11.30, you can text me. It won't wake me up, my phone is on silent. So I'd rather you text me and I'll get to you in the morning than if you forget what that question was. So don't be afraid, in the middle of the night, you can sure text or call me. I won't answer the call, but you can leave a voicemail and I'll call you in the morning. I hire a cleaner before pictures and then I hire a professional photographer to come do pictures. I, I strongly suggest having a professional picture, professional photographer coming to do pictures. That's just my thing. Like I said, open houses, I do my own. I do my own marketing, my own flyers, YouTube videos, TikToks, paid ads, all that good stuff. So, hey. Now, the number one mistake people are making in Sioux Falls area here, they're not hiring me to sell their house. So don't make that mistake. <laughs> but anyways, if you have any questions regarding Sioux Falls or selling your house, even if you don't live here, reach out and I will help you as best as I can. If you liked the video, like it, subscribe, comment, do what you gotta do. I appreciate it all.